Winter was coming to the island of Sodor. The morning ground was covered in crisp white frost. Thomas and Emily were happily chuffing up and down the line. Thomas was enjoying pulling Annie and Clarabel. He thought he was doing a grand job. But Emily had other ideas. She thought he could be doing an even grander job. So Emily decided to help Thomas by telling him what he was doing wrong. When she saw him puffing down the branch line, she cried out, Slow down, you are going too fast and bumping your passengers. Later, Emily saw Thomas by a bridge. He had stopped to take on water and was talking to some children. Stop talking to the children, said Emily. You are working and they will make you late. I'm never late, said Thomas huffily. There's always a first time, said Emily cheerfully. And she puffed away. Thomas was cross. He loved talking to children and thought Emily was being a big bossy buffers. Annie and Clarabel agreed. I am never going to listen to Emily ever, ever again, said Thomas. So there. The next morning, a sleepy Thomas had to leave Tidmouth Sheds bright and early. He was to collect some trucks from the quarry and take them to the docks. Later that morning, the fat controller arrived with a new weather report. There is snow on the way. You must all have your snow ploughs fitted. Excuse me, sir, said Emily, but Thomas has already left for the quarry. Then you must find Thomas and tell him Sir Topham wants him to wear his snow plough. So Emily puffed away to get her snow plough fitted. The workmen fixed Emily's snow plough on in no time at all and she set off to find Thomas. Emily was very happy. She was looking forward to telling him what to do. Thomas was taking on water at Maithwaite Station. Emily puffed up in front of him. She blew her whistle, but Thomas didn't say hello. She just wants to boss me again, grouched Thomas. Thomas, she called. You must go and get your snowplow fitted. Thomas could hear what Emily was saying, but pretended he couldn't. He thought he was being very clever. So Emily tooted even louder again. You must go and get your snowplow fitted, she cried. Bother snowplows, said Thomas, and bother Emily anyway. The weather is perfectly fine. And he puffed away as fast as he could. Thomas delivered the trucks to the quarry, then set off to collect the cream from the dairy. Everything was going well. But soon the clear blue sky was eaten away by dark clouds. They look like snow clouds to me, said his driver, and he was right. Soon, big flakes of white snow began to fall. Then, the snow gathered into drifts and covered the tracks. Cinders and ashes, cried Thomas as his wheels began to slip. Snow fell all over the island. Emily cut safely through the drifts with her snowplow. Thomas will be in trouble now. Emily was right. Thomas was working harder and harder, but he had to go more and more slowly. We can't go on, said his driver. Thomas pulled to a slow, sad stop by a signal box. And his driver went for help. It snowed and snowed. 
Thomas felt very cold and twice as miserable. Then he heard the sound of an engine. Thomas was delighted until he saw who his rescuer was. It was Emily. I told you to go and get your snow plough, she said. Now look what has happened. Thomas was still cross. You should say sorry for bossing me about. I am sorry, said Emily. Sorry you didn't listen to me. Emily and Thomas chuffed into Tidmouth sheds. The fat controller was waiting. He did not look happy. Emily, you must take Thomas to get his snow plow fitted at once, said the fat controller sternly. You must learn to listen. Thomas felt bad. He didn't know it was the fat controller who wanted him to wear his snow plow. Emily felt bad too. She didn't like seeing Thomas in trouble. I'm sorry, sir, said Emily. I forgot to tell Thomas it was your idea. You mean I have two engines that don't listen, boomed the fat controller. Well, I never. Emily, you must take Thomas to get his snowplow fitted at once. Soon the work was finished and Thomas was wearing his snowplow. Thank you for owning up, said Thomas. You are a very good friend. That's all right, said Emily. You're a good friend too, but next time, if you want to stay out of trouble, just do what I say. Even Thomas had to laugh. The island of Sodor is surrounded by beautiful blue sea. It has fields of green and sandy yellow beaches. There are rivers, streams, and lots of trees where the birds sing. There are windmills and a coal mine, and docks where visitors to the island arrive. The island also has lots and lots of railway lines. Who's that puffing down the track? It's Thomas. Hello, Thomas. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the island of Sodor. Edward is the same color as Thomas and the same size as James. He can pull carriages and push trucks. And he often works as a back engine. But Edward is old and not as strong as the other engines. So sometimes Edward feels left out. The Duke and Duchess of Boxford came to visit their new summer house. They came on their own private engine called Spencer. Spencer is big and silver and very fast. When Spencer pulled into Knapford, his driver had exciting news for him. You have beaten Gordon's record, he said. Of course, boasted Spencer. I'm faster and finer than all the engines on Sodor put together. The fat controller's engines were very cross. Spencer's just a big silver show-off, sniffed Gordon, and everyone agreed. The fat controller spoke to the engines. Spencer will take the Duke and Duchess to their summer house. Another engine will take their furniture. The fat controller's engines saw the chance for a race. Please, sir, said Thomas, Percy, Gordon and James, all together. May I go? You all have other work to do, boomed the fat controller. Edward will take the furniture. James and Gordon groaned. Fancy sending a back engine to do an express engine's job, sniffed Gordon. He'll lose the race and let the old railway down, said James. 
Thomas and Percy were cross. Edward was their friend. Spencer has a bigger boiler, said Thomas, but that just means more hot air. An honest steamy can beat a pouty puffer any day, added Percy. Edward set off, slow and steady. Will do my best, will do my best, he puffed. Spencer set off and quickly passed Edward. I've won already, he boasted. And with a whoosh, he was gone. Edward came to the bottom of a steep hill. The freight was heavy and he felt very tired. He huffed and he puffed and was soon at the top. He could see Spencer in the distance and set chase at once. Edward raced down the hill. Spencer stopped at Wellsworth Station. The Duke and Duchess wanted to buy some tea and cakes from the refreshment lady. Edward teetered into view. Hurry up, old boy, laughed Spencer. Can't have you finishing too far behind me. Edward wished he could have a rest too. But the station master and the porters had heard about the race. Hooray for Edward, they cheered. Edward picked up steam and proudly puffed past Spencer. But then the Duke and Duchess finished their tea and Spencer was off in a flash. He roared past Edward. Faster and best, faster and best, he chirruped. Edward was nearly out of puff. The furniture felt heavier than ever. Up ahead, Spencer had to stop. The Duke wanted to take some photographs of the countryside. The Duke set up his camera. Spencer closed his eyes. Nothing to worry about, he said lazily. Gordon was returning to Brendam Docks. He passed Spencer and knew Edward must be losing the race. Edward is a waste of steam, he sniffed. But when Gordon passed Edward and saw how hard he was trying, he felt bad about what he had said. Well done, Edward, he called. You are a credit to the railway. Edward was so happy his boiler tingled. He found Puff he never knew he had. The Duke and Duchess had finished taking photographs and were back on board. Time to go, said his driver and rang the bell. But nothing happened. Spencer was dreaming of victory. He didn't hear the bell. And he didn't hear Edward puffing past him. Spencer's driver rang the bell again. When Spencer finally opened his eyes, he could see Edward heading towards the summer house. Nearly there, nearly there, he gasped. Spencer took off as fast as he could. But as he reached the siding, his driver ordered him to slow down. These are old tracks and you are a very heavy engine, he said. You must go slowly. Spencer had no choice. He had to slow down. And he trundled slowly down the siding. With every click and every clack, he knew that he had lost the race. Edward puffed towards the summer house. I've won, he gasped. I did it. Edward felt like a really useful engine. Hooray, I've won, he cheered loudly. Edward felt like the pride of the Sodor Railway. And he was right. 
The island of Sodor is surrounded by beautiful blue sea. It has fields of green and sandy yellow beaches. There are rivers, streams and lots of trees where the birds sing. There are windmills and a coal mine and docks where visitors to the island arrive. The island also has lots and lots of railway lines. Who's that puffing down the track? It's Thomas. Hello, Thomas. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the island of Sodor. It was a busy time on the island of Sodor. The railway inspector was coming. Signals were checked. Platforms were scrubbed. Everyone wanted the railway to look its best. At last, the big day was here. The railway inspector arrives today, the fat controller said. What's a railway inspector calls? Percy asked. Railway inspector, Gordon huffed. He comes to look at the railway every year. He checks everything is spick and span, said Thomas. This year he is to give a special prize to the best turned out engine, added the fat controller. So I want you all to look your best. A special prize, puffed Thomas. I wonder if we could win, asked Percy. Pa, Gordon snorted, he's bound to give it to an express engine. Or one with big wheels, said Emily. I think he'll give it to a red engine, James beamed proudly. Don't listen to them, puffed Thomas. A really useful engine can look as grand as any engine. That afternoon, Thomas and Percy arrived at the quarry. But as the stone was loaded onto the trucks, a big cloud of stone whooshed down and landed right on top of Thomas. Yuck! coughed Thomas. Now you'll never win first prize, Percy moaned. Don't worry, Percy, Thomas puffed. All I need is a good washdown. So Thomas raced off. But when he arrived at the washdown, Emily was already there, covered in soap suds. Hurry up! I need to get clean for the inspection. There's no need for you to get clean, said Emily. I'm going to be the grandest engine there. I'll still win first prize, Thomas huffed, and he steamed off to help Percy. Thomas and Percy puffed across the countryside. But when Thomas and Percy arrived at Brendam Docks, they saw the fat controller. He was with the railway inspector. Oh, no, puffed Thomas, the railway inspector, but I'm still dirty. So Thomas raced back to the washdown. When Thomas got to the washdown, James was already there. I'm going to be the shiniest at the inspection, James sniffed. There's no point in you even being here. This made Thomas cross. He wanted to win first prize more than ever. But James's red coat did look very shiny. I hope my blue coat can look as shiny as James. Thomas puffed to himself and he steamed back to the docks. Percy and Thomas shunted the quarry trucks into place. When they had finished, Percy was dirty. And Thomas was dirtier than ever. So they raced to the washdown as fast as they could. This time, Gordon was there. All done, Gordon puffed proudly. Thomas thought Gordon looked splendid. Then, 
James and Emily pulled into the station. They look splendid too. Emily's wheels look shinier than ever and James's red paint sparkled in the sun. Now Thomas was worried. There's no point in going to the inspection, Thomas puffed sadly. We'll never win. Of course we can win, Percy puffed. We just need a good clean. Percy and Thomas were covered in soap suds. They were scoured and scrubbed and brushed and buffed. Percy loved being washed. But now Thomas was sad. He thought he would never look as grand as the other engines. James, Emily and Gordon were waiting for the railway inspector. The sunlight here makes my dome sparkle, Gordon puffed proudly. It makes my red paint look shinier than ever, said James. And my wheels glimmer, Emily added. The engines tried to find the sunniest spot in the coal yard. So James backed up. Suddenly he bumped into a truck. The truck rolled into a lever. Then there was a whooshing sound. Oh no, James puffed. Coal poured out everywhere. It poured onto the tracks and all over Gordon, James and Emily. They weren't gleaming and shiny anymore. The fat controller and the railway inspector arrived. These engines are filthy, the railway inspector said crossly. I've never seen so much coal dust. Just then, Gordon blew to clean his funnel. Coal dust shot into the air. It covered the fat controller and the railway inspector. Sorry, coughed Gordon. At last, Thomas and Percy arrived. When the railway inspector saw Thomas and Percy, he was delighted. You two are just what engines should look like, he said. Thomas and Percy won first prize. The railway inspector gave them each a special rosette. Thomas and Percy beamed with pride. I'm glad you made me come to the inspection, puffed Thomas. It's just like you said, puffed Percy. A really useful engine can look as grand as any engine. The island of Sodor is surrounded by beautiful blue sea. It has fields of green and sandy yellow beaches. There are rivers, streams and lots of trees where the birds sing. There are windmills and a coal mine and docks where visitors to the island arrive. The island also has lots and lots of railway lines. Who's that puffing down the track? It's Thomas. Hello, Thomas. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the island of Sodor. It was a crisp, cold winter day on the island of Sodor. Snow lay thick on the ground. The engines were working extra hard. James was pulling the slow goods train. He had stopped at a signal. Percy pulled up alongside, carrying the mail. Hello, James, said Percy. Then the signal changed to green. Goodbye, James whistled Percy, and he was off in a flash. I was here first, grumbled James. Why do I have to wait? The mail train is more important than slow goods, said his driver. Later, when James stopped for water, Thomas was already in front of him. I have to go first, said Thomas excitedly. I'm a guaranteed connection. Everyone has a more important job than me, grumbled James. Nonsense, said Thomas. Everyone knows you're a really useful engine. But James wanted to be an important engine too. 
Later that day, the Fat Controller came to see James. You must take coal to all the stations on the island, he boomed. If the fires in the waiting room go out, the passengers will get cold and complain. It's a very important job, he added. You can rely on me, sir, said James proudly. The Fat Controller left. James was excited. An important job, he said happily. Ha, ah, sniffed Gordon. It's only a load of coal after all. Nonsense, snorted James. I am going to keep the passengers warm. What could be more important than that? And he wished over to the water tower. But there was a queue at the water tank. Come on, he steamed impatiently. I have an important job to do. Wait your turn, bossy boiler, said Thomas. James felt too important to wait, so he didn't. James rushed to the coaling station. He met Edward waiting at a junction. Edward was looking bothered. He had too many jobs and was feeling puffed out. Can you take these sleigh trucks to the quarry? Edward asked. Sorry, Edward, but I can't, puffed James. I've got the most important job on the island and he chuffed grandly away. James arrived at the coaling station. He buffered up to the coal trucks and was on his way. James was looking forward to delivering his coal. Now I'm useful and important, he chuffed happily. Then there was trouble. James puffed harder and harder. He went faster and faster. Then he began to feel hotter and hotter. I don't feel well, wailed James, and he had to stop. Your water tanks have run dry, his driver told him. We'll have to wait for help. Just then, Edward pulled up beside James. Please, push me to the water tank, pleaded James. I'm sorry, Edward puffed sadly. You wouldn't take my trucks to the quarry and now I'm running late with my passenger train. And Edward steamed away. Edward stopped and told the signalman all about James. The signalman telephoned for help, and soon Salty was on his way. He pulled up alongside James. Why didn't you fill up with water this morning, matey? James told him about the queue at the water tank. I've heard you were too busy to help Edward, too, said Salty. I was in a hurry, protested James. Mine is the most important job on the island. No job is more important than helping another engine, said Salty firmly. And deep down in his boiler, James knew Salty was right. Thanks to Salty, James's water tank was soon filled and he was well on his way. He knew he had to make up for lost time. Then James saw Diesel up ahead. He had broken down and looked unhappy. James wanted to tease him, but then he remembered what Salty had said. No job is more important than helping another engine, he said to himself, and even Diesel is an engine. Come on, Diesel, I'll push you back to the sheds. Pushing Diesel and pulling trucks was hard work. At last, James got Diesel to the repair yard, but he still had to deliver his coal. The wind blew, and it was getting colder by the minute. James steamed all over the island, delivering coal to the station waiting route. Everyone was pleased to see James. 
Thanks to him, they were all kept toasty warm. The next morning, the Fat Controller came to see James. He knew all about Edward's trucks and James running out of water. I'm sorry, sir, said James. I put my own job first. But you did learn your lesson and you helped Diesel, the Fat Controller boomed cheerfully. And you delivered your call on time. You, James, are a really useful engine. James nearly burst with pride. Thank you, sir, he said. Being really useful was better than feeling important. The island of Sodor is surrounded by beautiful blue sea. It has fields of green and sandy yellow beaches. There are rivers, streams and lots of trees where the birds sing. There are windmills and a coal mine and docks where visitors to the island arrive. The island also has lots and lots of railway lines. Who's that puffing down the track? It's Thomas. Hello, Thomas. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the island of Sodor. It had been a stormy night on the island of Sodor. Telegraph poles had blown down. Tiles had been blown off the station roofs. And branches had fallen onto the lines. All over the island, the storm had made a terrible mess. The Fat Controller came to Tidmouth Sheds. The storm has caused confusion and delay, he boomed. So you must all be really useful engines. I'll be the most useful engine, boasted James. No, I will, sniffed Gordon. I'm the fastest. I'll do the most journeys. Thomas hoped he could finish his special as quickly as possible. He wanted to do the most journeys and be the most useful engine of all. Soon all the engines were steaming away from Tidmouth sheds. James went to Knapford Yard to pick up the workmen. Gordon went to the goods yard to collect telegraph poles. Toby trundled to collect new roof tiles. And Thomas steamed over to Marron Station. Farmer McCall was waiting for Thomas. Next to him were boxes and boxes of newly laid eggs. These fresh eggs are needed across the island, said Farmer McCall. The station staff quickly loaded Thomas's trucks with the eggs. And Thomas was raring to go. My eggs must be delivered safely, said Farmer McCall. So I am coming to make sure you go slowly and carefully. Slowly, wished Thomas sadly. He wanted to finish his job quickly and make lots of journeys. Thomas gave one sad toot of his whistle and slowly pulled away. Thomas trundled on. He huffed and puffed as gently as he could. Thomas had to stop at a crossing. Gordon steamed by. Fastest and best, he chirruped. Gordon looked very happy. Thomas felt very sad. Thomas pulled into Maithwaite Station. James was waiting. He was carrying workmen. They were fixing the station house roof. Station staff unloaded four boxes of eggs for the village store. How many journeys have you done? asked James brightly. This is my first, said Thomas. Ah, 
huffed James. I'm on my third. I'm as red as a rocket and twice as fast. And he steamed quickly out of the station. Thomas was upset. He wanted to go fast more than ever. Now the eggs were unloaded and Thomas chuffed slowly out of the station. Thomas puffed across the countryside very, very slowly. Then Thomas saw Toby taking on coal in the siding. His trucks were full of rooftops. Toby was having a wonderful day. I'm on my second journey, he whistled proudly. Thomas was very sad. Toby rushed past him. It made Thomas want to go faster than ever. Even Toby has made more journeys than me, he moaned. It's not fair. I can be fast and careful. So Thomas started to speed up. Fast and careful, fast and careful, he huffed happily. But Thomas was going so fast he wasn't being careful. Farmer McCall was worried. Slow down, Thomas, he called. You will break my eggs. But Thomas was going so quickly he didn't hear Farmer McCall. And he didn't slow down. He went even faster. The eggs started to bounce in their boxes. Then Thomas changed lines. It caused a big bump. The eggs were breaking. Thomas came to a junction. He had to slow down. Stop, Thomas, cried Farmer McCall. You have broken my eggs. This time, Thomas did hear Farmer McCall, and he stopped right away. Cinders and ashes, he cried. But Farmer McCall was still cross. Thomas felt bad. I'm sorry, he whistled. I just wanted to be really useful. Farmer McCall checked his eggs. Luckily, only a few were broken. Now Thomas knew he had to go slowly, so he pulled away as gently as he could. Thomas headed for Brendam Docks. Suddenly he heard an impatient toot. James was behind him. He blew his whistle loudly, but Thomas knew he couldn't speed up. Sometimes going slowly can be just as important as going fast, said Thomas, and he puffed carefully on. That evening, the fat controller came to Tidmouth Sheds. He looked very pleased. You have all worked hard and been really useful engines, he said proudly. The engines were very happy, except for Thomas. He was thinking about the broken eggs. I only made one journey, sir, he said sadly, and I broke Farmer McCall's eggs. But most of the eggs were delivered safely, boomed the fat controller. Farmer McCall gave the broken ones to me, and I love having scrambled eggs for my tea. You, Thomas, he added, are a really useful engine. Thomas just beamed.